food time is already up. The, but this issue is so, this is really the most controversial of the entire Aqdi of Umar bin Khattab, which to this day is subject of much headaches for all of us students of knowledge and, 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 and ulama and scholars because people are so confused and that is the issue of the triple divorce. The triple divorce. And very briefly, this is a fiqh class, a different one. I don't have time for all of that. But you just know it happened in the time of Umar. And the whole controversy goes back to this issue of Umar al-Khattab and what exactly happened. So, to be very, very simplistic, there are two narratives. There are two narratives. Which one is valid is the whole point of controversy. The one narrative is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the both of them, they considered a triple divorce to be one. And Umar ibn al-Khattab was the one who changed this policy and considered a triple divorce to be three. Now pause here. Does everybody know a triple divorce? A triple divorce After how long? What is the period? Okay, so I'll explain. The triple divorce is when a husband says to his wife, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. And he says it in one gathering. Okay? So this is a triple divorce. Or you can say, he says, I divorce you three times. Okay? Or you can say, he says, I divorce you a triple divorce. In other words, the clear point is that he is wanting to divorce her multiple times in one sitting or gathering. Now, the technical or the realistic or the sunnah method of divorcing is that you give one divorce at one time. And by unanimous consensus, a man is sinful in the eyes of Allah for giving multiple divorces at one time. Okay? Because he has three opportunities for divorce. We know that. maratan. There are two that you can take her back at the third time. Khalas. Fala min ba'du. So there are three talaqs that you can do. Three strikes as we know. Three talaqs. And the point being, you're supposed to give a divorce if you want to. If it doesn't work out, then... Uh, khalas. If it does work out, bring her back in. Then if it doesn't work out, another time a second divorce, and then a third divorce. So that's what it's supposed to do. You're supposed to space it out if it really needs to be spaced out. Now, suppose a husband gets so angry that he wants to shut the door for having this wife be a part of his life ever in the future. In other words, he wants to be cruel and nasty and punish her. And he wants to shut the door permanently. That I'm never ever going to have anything to do with you. And it's impossible now for me to do that. And he does that in one gathering. One sitting meaning. One place at one time. Not spacing it out over a few months. They have another fight. You know that's the sharia wise. That's the ideal of the sharia. That you know they had a fight. They had to divorce. Then he got uh, regretful and he... Uh, wanted to bring her back, and then a few months later, another major uh, uh, fight, then another divorce. That's the way it should be. Suppose he got so angry, he wanted to shut the door, and he said, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. Wanting to completely cancel out any opportunity for actual nikah after this. According to the first narrative, this triple divorce was considered one because you cannot have another divorce once she is already divorced. You have to wait until the first divorce basically finishes and you take her back or the nikah breaks away. Then the point comes you can perhaps give a second divorce. Clear? Right? You understand this point? The first narrative says that once he says I divorce you, he can say a million times, I divorce you, in that, in that gathering, in that living room, in that bedroom. It doesn't matter, because it's one divorce, and it's just like the lights, which you turned it off, khalas. Doesn't matter, it's going to be off, until its whole idda expires, right? Until the lady's idda finishes, then he has the option of a second if he wants. 
marriage or what not. So this narrative says Umar ibn Khattab was the first person to change this. And this understanding goes back to a hadith by Ibn Abbas that he says, and this hadith is in Sahih Muslim, and this is the crux of the argument, that uh, that كانت الطلاق في عهد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وفي عهد أبي بكر الصديق وفي سنتين من عهد عمر بن الخطاب الطلاق الثلاث واحدة the talaq at the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and Abu Bakr and the first two years of Umar the triple talaq was considered واحدة one this is explicit in Sahih Muslim the triple talaq was considered one then Umar ibn al-Khattab said the people have been hasty regarding a matter that they had some leeway in. They are being hasty, they are being mean and nasty in a matter that Allah had given them leeway. In other words, it's an a expression that basically means the people are taking advantage of a loophole and they're abusing the system. So to shut the loophole why don't we enforce it on them? So he enforced it on them, Ibn Abbas said. Meaning what? Triple became triple. That's the first understanding. It is the predominant understanding. And then scholars differ. So this is understanding 1A, 1B. 1A, the four madahib. Since Umar did it, and the Sahaba agreed, and they had ijma', khalas, we will do it as well. So all four madahib have three equals three. Clear? All four madahib. This is the standard opinion of Sunni Islam. Three equals three when it comes to talaq. And their main point of evidence, Umar did it as qada, he instituted it as a nationwide philosophy of ruling and the Sahaba all followed him and nobody changed it after him and Uthman and Ali they followed along that was the Qadha end of story who are we to change when they've decided okay now that's 1A 1B exact same narrative but flip it around if Umar decided it that's not the Sharia per se that's Ijtihad of Umar so why don't we go back to the Asl which is what the Prophet ﷺ did 3 equals 1 this was Ibn Taymiyyah's position and because of it he was jailed. Because the other Madahib scholars said this is a bid'ah position. Because it goes against the four Madahib. This is a, a bid'i position. And it is a position that has no basis in the Madahib. And you can't find any of the Madhab scholars saying this. So they said this is a shad position that he should be jailed for. And of course they were very jealous of Ibn Taymiyyah for many other reasons. And so they used this and, they, and he went to jail for this fiqhi position of three talaq being one. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah gave this fatwa, his student Ibn Qayyim very beautifully defended it in a number of books. Ibn Taymiyyah as well has a treatise on it. And frankly, their evidences are very, very powerful. And in fact, the statement of Ibn Abbas is very clear. It's very explicit that the three talaq was considered one. Then Umar said, because the people are taking advantage, we will hold them account to it. So, فَأَمْضَاهُ عَلَيْهِمْ He considered three to be three. And Ibn Taymiyyah's position was, خلاص, Umar had the right to make his ishtihad, but that's not binding on the rest of the ummah till Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And Ibn Taymiyyah's position has remained alive up until this day. And as you know, it remains a source of tension to this day. The Madhabi scholars to this day say three equals three. And those who follow Ibn Taymiyyah say three equals one. And this is still a source of major tension. And it is something that, unfortunately, I as well have to be getting involved in all the time when a sister comes. And, a, and this is the reality. I've given a whole khutbah about this. That, wallahi, we, we, we think very much about, and we talk a lot about the importance of marriage and, and how to get married. But divorce is a taboo. And we never tell our communities how to divorce. And unfortunately, because it's a taboo topic, and we never talk about it, people don't know how to divorce. And they fall into major errors and problems. Both schools or both sides agree, this is not how you should divorce. The ikhtilaf comes, what if you act foolish? 
and this is a statement of Ibn Abbas that uh, a man came and said, Oh Ibn Abbas, I was angry last night and I divorced my wife, the number of stars in the sky. <laughs> oh Ibn Abbas, what do I do? Oh Ibn Abbas, help me. And Ibn Abbas said that some of you acts in haste and anger and foolishness and then the next day you come and you say, Yabna Abbas, Yabna Abbas, Yabna Abbas. I cannot help you. You are the one who acted in this manner. Means he as well adopted Umar's fatwa because that was Umar's position. And it became the standard of the ummah. The point being though, that whatever position you follow, both sides agree, this is not the way you divorce. Divorce is not done on the spur of the moment. It's not done in haste. It's not done in anger. If you must divorce, then plan it out the way you planned your marriage out. Think it through. Pray istikhara. Make istishara. And do it the proper manner. Then you're not going to fall into this problem. Divorce should never be done on the spur of the moment, which unfortunately is the culture of the Muslim lands. Wallahi, this is one of the biggest musibas. That we don't know the etiquettes even of divorce. Yes, sometimes divorce has to take place. When it must be done, it should be given the same amount of thought. No, wallahi, it should be given more thought than the marriage itself. This is the sunnah. This is the sahaba's position. So that's why Umar al-Khattab, when he instituted this, what was his goal? Think about it. His goal was, O oh men, stop playing around with divorce. It's a big deal. Play, don't mess around with it. And he wanted to punish them for being foolish. Stop being foolish. Don't just say divorce, 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 and then think there's not going to be any consequences. This was the niyyah of Umar. And you know, it has a valid perspective. Now, when push comes to shove, I am sympathetic to Ibn Taymiyyah in this regard. And for me, clearly, and also, wallahi, you know, the man was foolish, but then we shouldn't punish his wife and children for his stupidity, which is what ends up happening. The man was foolish, he gives the triple divorce. Then he comes the next day to me and to all of the Mashaikh. What do I do? What do I do? He's fatwa shopping for Ibn Taymiyyah. Who's going to give him that fatwa? And I know this and we all know it. This is the reality. But his wife of 15, 20, 30 years, his children, what not. What are we going to do? Yeah, he was foolish. He acted in haste. Why should the whole family suffer? And I agree, Ibn Taymiyyah has a very, and Ibn, Ibn al Qayyim has like a huge section in his book, Ilam al Waqi'in, and others, where he goes into such great detail that Wallah is very convincing to me and to many students. And this is also the standard fatwa of uh, Saudi Arabia in the court system. The courts all in Saudi Arabia, the triple is single. And somebody told me literally last week from the Azhar school, somebody told me that Azhar has also adopted this position. I am, have not read it myself, but an Azhari sheikh. Last week I was, where was I, in some city and I was talking this issue with them and they told me no, now even Al-Azhar has adopted this position which I found very, very interesting because Al-Azhar is not pro-Ibn Taymiyyah. But they understood that marriages are being ruined, that uh, this is a very controversial issue and so they as well have adopted that the triple divorce is uh, considered single. Um, and therefore according to that position, if you divorce triple or multiple times, you are sinful in the eyes of Allah, and you must repent, and you acted foolishly. But that will be counted as one. And that means that if this was your first divorce, you have two. But if it was your second or third, so again, you have to think about it, you know, like this. In any case, so Umar al-Khattab had this uh, position. The final